What's up, everybody? It's your man, KJ the Great. And I'm back with another episode of All Sports Media TV. And it is Fight Week, baby, as we got a showdown of Undisputed versus Undisputed. Yes, 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 y'all. Let's talk about this. Because I'm about to piss some of y'all off. I'm in the mood to do so. And we're going to do so. Let's talk about it. All right, y'all. So we got the big time showdown, like I said, between two undisputed champions. And that is Canelo, Saul Canelo Alvarez, who is 59 wins, two losses, two draws, 39 wins by way of knockout. He is five foot eight with a 70 inch uh, arm reach. He is the current undisputed super middleweight champion of the world. He will be taking on the current undisputed super welterweight champion of the world. That being Jermel, Hitman, Lions only, Charlo, who is 35 wins, one loss, one draw, 19 wins by knockout, standing five foot 11, maybe six foot, with a 73-inch arm reach. Now, let's talk about these fighters. We got Canelo. Man, what else can we really say about Canelo? He ain't my favorite fighter, but what else? You know, respect the game. I respect it, you know? Game recognized game. Man, he, uh, in a short, what is it, 14-month uh, or so period, Pretty much collected all the belts at super middleweight. Uh, the last piece of the puzzle when he stopped Caleb Sweethand's plant in the 11th round of their fight. Solidified himself, becoming the first Mexican undisputed champion and one of a handful of uh, four belt era undisputed champions. Man, that was crazy. It was crazy. It was crazy. It was crazy. Then he defended his title against Triple G. Womp womp. Um, he did knock him out. Uh, there was uh, rumors that came out that Canelo had a hand injury in that fight or leading up to that fight that he probably aggravated or something. So ultimately, he got the unanimous decision win. Collected like $40 million or something like that. Don't really matter. Then he had a massive homecoming fight against John Ryder. Talking like 60,000 or something like that out there in, uh, I believe it was somewhere in Mexico, Guadalajara, I believe, somewhere out there. But he pretty much battered John Ryder the entire fight, knocked him down, had him, he battered the man. Let's just keep it at that. And he ended up getting a unanimous decision. After that, there was more rumors about, you know, the hand injury and uh, him needing to get some uh, rehab done on that hand. That's why he couldn't knock those last two fighters out. But he uh, stated in the press conferences leading up to this fight that all is good. Uh, the hand is good. Rehab went well and expect. Canelo to be at 100% and the old Canelo. Now, you guys know he only lost two times in his career. He lost to uh, five division a champion, former five division champion, uh, formerly known as Pretty Boy Floyd, formerly known as T uh, uh, Money Mayweather, now known as TBE Floyd Mayweather. Uh, he got he got a he took a majority uh, decision loss in that fight when in reality he lost every round in that fight. Didn't win a round, but we ain't gonna go over that. Then um, you know he lost to uh, Dimitri Bevel at one seventy five. A lot of people were uh, up in arms and and, and going and talking about the fight like, oh, he lost because. You know, Dimitri Bevel was too big and he was daring to be great. Well, you can't dare to be great if you try to do something twice. Because if you guys remember, he went up to 175 pounds before and he knocked out Sergey Sergei Krusher Kovalev, a little shaky, 
uh, knockout, but he knocked him out in like the 10th round of that fight. So you can't dare to be great if you're trying to do something twice. Nonetheless, he's where he is, a guaranteed Hall of Famer, no doubt. And he signed a three-fight deal with the PBC. Uh, a lot of people were expecting him to come right in and go after or give David Benavidez that opportunity. Nope, not happening. Staying away from that monster. But for how long? We're going to see. Now, let's talk about Lions only, Mr. Charlo. As you guys know, I said he is the super welterweight champion, uh, undisputed champion. He became undisputed last, uh, what was it, March of 2022, somewhere around there, when he knocked out Brian Castano in the 10th round of their fight. That was a rematch. Crazy, crazy rematch. And it saw him correct the things that he needed to correct from the first fight and do more, be a little bit more active. Because if you go back and watch the first fight, Jermel Charlo, in the first half of that fight, he was not as active as he should have been. He didn't let his hands go. But he came on really, really strong in the second half of that fight, which ultimately got him the draw. A lot of people were saying, no, I thought he lost. No, it was about even. And I, I called it a draw myself because uh, Brian Costano, he, he literally just, he, he faded over the second half. And it was just like, whoop, whoop. That's, it wasn't any of this back and forth throughout the fight. It was like, Costano's here, Charlo's here. Then it went, Charlo's here, Costano's here. Second fight, like I said, he rectified it. That one draw got a knockout. Knocked him down, right hand. It was kind of a delayed reaction, but got him down. And he got back up and closed the show. Undisputed. That's where it went. The one loss that he suffered in his career, he lost uh, a decision to Tony Harrison, but he ended up with a rematch with Tony Harrison and knocking Tony Harrison out late in that fight. And I mean, devastated knocking him out. You're talking, knocked him down early. You know, got his attention and was just working and working. You can see he was determined. He was working. Boom. Punches were landing crisp. Caught him in that uh, late round. Knocked him down. Tony Harrison, you know, he was doing all this and acting like he wasn't hurt. Then he got him up on the ropes and just started hitting him. Uppercut, uppercut, uppercut. But he didn't want to go down. I don't know what the hell was wrong with him. Go down. But nonetheless, the referee stopped it. Saved that man. And uh, he became under, uh, the WBC champion again. He went on to start unifying the division. He stopped Rosario with a jab to the body. Like, that was crazy. During the pandemic, just bam, one to the body. And Buddy was out. So, let's talk about this fight. We're going to talk about this fight right here. We're going to talk about this fight. All right. So, the thing about these two fighters is Canelo is a guaranteed pressure fighter. Now, his ability to back up and allow you to think you put in pressure is a great thing. I'm not, like I said, I'm not the biggest fan of Canelo, but I watch what he do and I respect the game. He'll try to get you to come in and, you know, he has really, really exceptional head movement. Don't have the best footwork. Let's clear that up. He's flat-footed. But he's powerful. His build is like kind of a short, stocky build, real powerful. Uh, and he can wear you down um, from start to finish. The thing about uh, Canelo is he, he, when he's fighting bigger fighters, I started to notice that he throws those punches at their arms. You go back and look at Dimitri Bevo. He had like bruises and everything else. Look at a couple of fighters he fought. Arms were bruised up. And it's a tactic to wear your arms down, get your arms going down, and then he just kind of breaks you from there. So with Charlo, is you've seen Charlo do a multitude of things on his toes and sometimes flat-footed as well. But um, on his toes, he can move really well. He can come forward really well. Um, he definitely, whenever he's pressured and somebody's pressuring him, it's one thing that people – overlook and underestimate about Charlo is his counter punch ability. He's definitely a really, really solid counter puncher. Uh, for 
the super welterweight division. He definitely has 19 knockouts and 35 fights, so he packs a good punch. The question will be, will his power carry up into this division? I know a lot of people uh, were paying close attention to the press conferences and interviews where he said, you know, when he spars, sometimes he spars bigger guys, so he knows what he can and can't take. He's naturally a bigger guy, so um, all this time he's been uh, keeping himself and fighting to keep himself down at 154. So him stepping up into this weight, he, he's already said he's feeling better. Uh, he don't feel as drained. He's feeling more energetic. So we have to see if that kind of plays into this and, and if, if he's able to carry that throughout the duration of the fight. We already know Canelo's power can carry throughout the du duration of the fight when he's 100%. Prime example is when he fought Caleb Plant, patient. Uh, Caleb Plant won a few of the early rounds, but you can see Canelo just come on in those middle rounds and those late rounds and just started wearing him down, wearing him down the pressure. Everything Caleb Plant was doing, he was just right there waiting, 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 picking his spot, and then he finally clipped him, knocked him down, and came right out the gate and just jumped right on him. So that could be uh, a big issue for uh, Charlo. Uh, if he's moving around a lot and gases, gases himself out, which Charlo will we get in this fight? Will we get the Charlo that starts out fast but fades over the second half, as we've seen him do before, not necessarily be tired but doesn't let his punches go? Or will we get that Charlo that starts slow and tries to pick it up? With a fighter like Canelo, I don't think he wants to try to do that because Canelo's pressure increases throughout the fight so you don't want to start slow and then you know try to pick it up with a, a fighter like canelo whose power has been known to carry throughout the fight then you'll just be in a, a dog fight and yeah and, and you, you don't really want to get into that position you know and so now my final prediction on this it's kind of hard for me to pick Charlo, because of the inactivity, he's been inactive for 16 months. He hadn't fought since Jan uh, since last year, 16 months, 2022. And this is his first fight, big fight, credit for taking this fight. But then again, it's also hard for me to just pinpoint and pick Canelo as you know, you watch him, a lot of people are claiming he's declining in his last two fights. Is it one of those things, or was he really injured? Now, if you guys remember, Jamel Charlo also suffered a broken hand. He was supposed to fight uh, Tim Zhu back in January in defense of his uh, undisputed title. But uh, it was January 28th is what that was scheduled for. And he had to pull out, showed his injury report, broke his hand in sparring. I don't know what the hell kind of uh, training and sparring Derrick James has these guys doing down there. But, damn, I mean, Errol Spence, he suffered a torn retina and a, a possible broken rib. Uh, I mean, come on, man. Lighten up on these guys. Shit. <clears throat> Excuse me. But uh, so in my opinion, man, I think this fight is going to go to Ah, let me say this. If this fight goes to distance and Jamel Charlo wins, he will win this fight by split decision. Split decision. I don't believe they will give him a unanimous decision. If Floyd Mayweather couldn't get a unanimous decision over uh, Canelo, do you think they're going to give Jamel Charlo a unanimous decision? I don't think he's going to get a unanimous decision. I think if it goes the distance, uh, Jamel Charlo will win it by split decision, and they will have a rematch Cinco de Mayo weekend of 2024. That's right there is the prediction. Now, in order to get there, he has to avoid being knocked out eight rounds deep by Canelo. That's my way of thinking Canelo could win this fight, is he has to knock out Jamel Charlo. I just believe... 
Uh, Jamel Charlo may tick a little bit better, punch a little bit faster throughout this fight, and rack up a bunch of points. But although he may rack up a bunch of points, that split decision is his way of winning. That's my opinion. But that's all I got for you guys. Make sure you hit that like button. Drop that comment in the comment section. Let me know what you guys think. Follow me on Instagram at All Sports Media TV. Follow me on my other Instagram at KJTheGreat09. Thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate you guys for every like, share, subscribe, letting your peoples know.